The ambush of Tudelberg Forest is one of the saddest and most dramatic episodes in all of Roman military history. An ambush that has captivated historians and the general public for centuries. But what happened after that event, and what was Rome's reaction to regain its honor? When the deadly blow reached the trapped legions and the news quickly spread, the remaining legionary forces guarding the border of the ring were traumatized to see the remaining soldiers appearing defeated through the forest. And as the full extent of the defeat began to take shape, riders were quickly sent back to Rome. The message would take about two weeks to arrive, and not far from the bearer of the bad news, another ominous message would be found, the severed head of the same Vero, which had been sent by the Germanic tribes to Rome. As one can imagine, this caused panic in the capital and fear gripped the streets. A vast barbarian host would now see Rome itself in flames. The truth is that the more sensible ones did not give much credibility to such a scenario. But there was certainly a real threat against the empire, as every time Rome bled, its enemies became emboldened. Who knows what tribe would launch incursions now, or what mob would rise in rebellion. It should be remembered that only a few years ago, the Great Illyrian Revolt saw nearly a million men rise at the gates of Rome, a rebellion that could only be crushed with an unprecedented military deployment. And now, just when things seemed calm, news of Tudelberg arrived. It is no wonder that the typically stoic Augustus began to break under the pressure. According to Gaius Suetonius, a Roman historian, he was so affected that, for several months he did not cut his beard or hair, and sometimes he would hit his head against the door cursing Vero. But it was time to act and regroup, and it seems that the first order of business for the empire was to assume a defensive posture. Augustus installed guards throughout Rome, expanded the mandates of provincial governors, and began mobilizing his forces. Meanwhile, in Germania, Arminius was busy plotting his next move with the Germanic tribes. They knew they had surprised Rome for a moment, and if they wanted to maintain that advantage, they needed to do something about it so they set out to eliminate the remaining Roman presence east of the Rhine. They attacked settlements, outposts, and fortresses. There was only one strong Roman stronghold that put up resistance. There, the Germanic forces clashed with the defenders and suffered numerous casualties in the attempt. They then decided to besiege the fort to starve the Romans to death. However, during a stormy night, the defenders managed to flee to the Rhine leaving the last imperial stronghold in Germania to be looted. But when the Germanic tribes attempted to move through the Rhine, they found themselves blocked by the now reinforced Roman defenses. In reality, no significant invasion was attempted since it became clear that Rome was recovering, so it was better to retreat and wait for the impending war. Unfortunately for the barbarians, this change of plans undermined their cause. Although in the previous period to Tudelberg, they had found a common purpose, now fractures and confrontations resurfaced. Even Arminius' former companions, now rivals, were an obstacle for him. For example, suggests A, Cheruscan noble, would form a pro-Roman coalition, while Maribadus, king of the Marcomanni refused to support his cause. Once Rome had overcome the effects of the initial trauma, it decided it was time for revenge. But who would serve as the herald of Roman justice? The emperor knew for sure that his man would be none other than his best general and adoptive son, Tiberius. When Tiberius was sent to Germania by Augustus, he took a very cautious approach since the most immediate goal was to stabilize the frontier, which was plunged into chaos following the ambush. The death of three legions had left a huge gap in the defenses, a gap that Arminius and his coalition of tribes continued to enlarge. To combat this threat, Tiberius reinforced the Rhine with eight legions, and once the defenses were secured, he changed the defensive posture to an offensive one. After all, as the saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. This saying was especially true on Rome's borders, where the legion's show of force served as a strong deterrent against any potential attacker. Therefore, Tiberius chose to send the most brutal of messages. He began launching retaliatory raids through the ring, and everything in the path of the Roman forces was burned to the ground. There were no crops, towns, or harvests that survived, and according to sources, he was so careful in his approach that not a single Roman died. This was total war in essence. However, 
It is true that Arminius and the chieftains who annihilated the legions remained unpunished after two long years. And despite laying the foundations for a future revenge, it would not be Tiberius who carried it out, as he was called back by the emperor in the year 12 AD. The reason for this early departure was that the 73-year-old Augustus was in poor health. The emperor wanted his heir Tiberius by his side to prepare for a smooth transition. Upon his return, Tiberius celebrated a great triumph, and soon after, Augustus finally died, now leaving the throne to the ruler of the vast empire that stretched from the Atlantic to the Red Sea. Tiberius now had no time to deal with Germania, so this task would be left to one of his brightest and most capable men, a 29-year-old named Germanicus. His name was an honorary title given to his father but would prove more fitting for his heir's achievements. Meanwhile, the Germans saw the glow of their victory at the Battle of the Tuttleberg Forest beginning to fade, as the Roman legions had opened a brutal swath through the ring, ravaging everything in their path. But that was only the beginning, as Rome's goal was revenge against Arminius and the perpetrators of Tuttleberg. In the year 15 AD, Germanicus marched against the Cherusci led by Arminius. During that campaign, the Romans advanced through the Tuttleberg Forest, where the legions were massacred and buried the bones of the fallen. The Romans also recovered the eagle of the annihilated 19th legion. The skirmishes with the Germans were constant and the Romans couldn't find a way to bring them to open field. But finally Germanicus, with tactics and great skill, was able to force Arminius to fight in open field, giving rise to the legendary battle of the Itis Diviso. In this battle, the Romans defeated the Germanic forces, injuring both Arminius and his uncle in Diamaro. After his success in Germanic Germania he was called to Rome by Tiberius where he celebrated a great triumph, and at this point Rome had regained its honor and quenched its thirst for revenge. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps us a lot as we will continue to create content like this.